This is a policy on joining. Now, let's settle for the details of the package this afternoon. Now, it's been more than two years since a truck carrying explosives to a mining site in Bogosu in the western region exploded at Apiate, destroying the whole community. 17 people died, and more than 3,000 persons were affected on January 2022. Now, this afternoon, phase one of a government rebuilding program is complete. I'll be handed over to the community shortly at the ceremony. We'll bring that to you live. Here on the post today, how much things have unfolded. We put together this, uh, these figures and statistics to tell the story. Now, on January 2022, 20th, a large blast occurred in an area at Apiate community near the city of Bogoso, about 300 kilometers, 180 miles west of the capital Accra. And following that, the explosion occurred when a motorcycle went under a truck carrying explosive that was en route to a gold mine at Bogoso. After the blast, people in the community rushed down to the scene when a second blast occurred a few minutes later. And this, folks, resulted in the destruction of dozens of buildings. And so the number of houses destroyed 500, according to the count. Number of people that were affected, 3,300. Number of people killed 17, including toddlers, you know. Number of people who got injured, maybe main for life, 59. And the minister directed, the sector minister, we saw the minister for lands and natural resources, Abujinapo, Samuel Abujinapo, uh, directed the company to pay $1 million before the restoration of its license, with the remaining $5 million to be paid in equal installment between March 1, 2022, and this year, August, uh, last year, August of 2023. And we know that some of them. So two years, three months, and 12 days. That's the countdown we have for you this afternoon. And now life is beginning to return to normalcy at a period. And very soon, we'll hear what government have to say. 124 housing units completed and ready to be handed over to those who had properties that were destroyed during the explosion. But a big question today is, has life returned to normal in Apiatu? Well, we'll find out after... Uh, this show before we go into the details, my colleague Masola Baba looks back at the incident and has come through with this report. Hey. 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 The big explosion that rocked the small community near Bogosu more than two years ago. A piazza was flattened, bodies strewn all over with some of them buried under the rubble. The car carrying the explosives was torn into tiny pieces after the explosion. Joseph Apia was at work when he was informed about the death of his son, 21-year-old Justice Kwesi Takwa. He lost his house and a pub. The explosion led to the death of 13 persons and those who survived it had to live with the effects of it. A retired ear, nose and throat surgeon, Dr. Paul Kwauntodi, says some of the residents are experiencing mild to moderate hearing loss. Some of the residents say more than two years after the incident, they are yet to receive compensation. Joseph Apia speaks for the aggrieved residents. Number one, the place that they are about to commission today, there is no water source. How are they going to reside there, whereby there is no water? Number two, during the explosion, a lot of people died, and yet the families have not been compensated. Number three, a lot of people were pierced as a result of the metal that spritted off. A lot of people are going through a head. No compensation. Medical attention is not there. Number four, those who died, who is to take care of their dependent? You could see that the government is not doing well with the community. It's not doing well with the community. So most of us have planned not to go there today for these reasons. So all that we are saying is that uh, there are a lot that the government needs to do at APAT. After two years, a total of 124,000 units and additional facilities have been completed for the affected residents. These newly constructed houses range from one bedroom to seven bedroom units and are equipped with enhanced amenities. This is a pause you enjoy. Now let me take you live to Apiate in the western region where the handing over ceremony is underway. We'll join 
state broadcaster Ghana Television for live coverage of this event. So this is the policy on joining us, and we will take you to Apiate for that, you know, handing over ceremony when the, the feed is ready, and then we'll bring that visual to you live. But before we do that, let's do some other stories, because Vice President and MPP flag bearer Dr. Mamadou Baumiam has emphasized the urgent need for land digitalization in Ghana. The score comes days after the death of a military officer at the Millennium City in the central region in a land-related altercation. Dr. Baumiam says government is committed to the modernization of the land administration system and enhancement of access to land-related services for all Ghanaians. He spoke in an interaction with a session of the clergy in the Western region as part of his regional tour of the region. One of the areas that we need to really solve is the land digitalization. We are doing, where we are going to digitalize the whole process. You should be able to sit down at home and know who really owns this land. On your mobile phone without really going to get land guards. Today we are working with land guards and people are being killed over ownership. But once we digitalize the whole process, the courts will know in one minute who really owns this land because everything will be digitalized and we will use blockchain technology. Blockchain technology sounds fancy, but it's simple. It means once you Yes, if nobody can change that record, nobody can change the record. That record is immutably solid. So once you apply the blockchain technology to the person, all the community that you tend to see at the Lands Commission that you think the files are missing, records are changed, all of that will be his, his history. And, so, and that can allow the country to develop. Because you, you cannot develop if you know, land ownership is in question. Investors will not come. You don't have a mortgage market. And so we're going to do a whole new thing. Meanwhile, the Ghana Armed Forces, they've condemned the attack and murder of the officer Lance Corporal Omar Abdul Rahman in an unprovoked circumstances at the Millennium City uh, in the central region. In a statement, the armed forces say they have commissioned investigations to the incident, and this is what the Ghana Armed Forces brought. And they say that uh, they regret to announce the tragic loss of one of their soldiers in an incident attributed to an alleged uh, dispute at Millennium City, Kaswa, in the central region on Tuesday, April 30, about 4.20 p.m. in an unprovoked uh, circumstance. The soldier was attacked and killed by one Ben Lord Abebio in an alleged land dispute. Now, their investigation indicates that Lance Corporal Omar Abdul Rahman owned a half plot of land which was in dispute at Millennium City, for which the Millennium City Police informed all parties to stay off the land until the issue was resolved. Allegedly, uh, Corporal Omar was informed some people were working on the land, accompanied by two of his colleagues, uh, Corporal Danso Michael, the deceased, and Corporal Ameto Matthew, they visited the land and confirmed the information. Omar and his colleagues stopped the people from working and proceeded to the Millennium uh, City Police Station to report the issue. Whilst at the police station, the acclaimed owner of the land arrived with two others believed to be land guards, confronted the soldier, during which they started firing at the deceased soldier who was going to park a vehicle at the police station. The police disarmed and arrested the first, the fire, after realizing Corporal Danso had been hit by the rounds fired. The body of the deceased soldier has since been deposited at the 37 military hospital morgue. The Ghana Armed Forces wishes to extend its heartfelt condolences to uh, the bereaved family, colleagues, friends, and loved ones. And we also got a statement from the National Security Office signed by the Minister Albert Kandapa disowning the said, uh, you know, Ben Lord. Uh, who, according to uh, police, you know, fired the, the weapon that resulted in the death of the police officer, Lance Corporal Danso, and that he, he doesn't work with the national security uh, uh, setup and is never be an employee of the national security setup. And so that is the situation that is coming from the Ghana Armed Forces. And this statement is signed by uh, Agri uh, Kwashi, who is the head of public relations with the Ghana. Um, forces and we are still here on the pause 
here on Joy News. And we are still uh, watching the feed when the feed is ready for the Apiate handing over ceremony. We'll do that. But before we do that, the Institute of Energy Security is challenging President Kufuado on his assertion that the power outages or the challenges that are now is now a thing of the past. It follows the Trade Union Congress demand for government to fix the power crisis. With many businesses coming to a standstill and others struggling to survive, the situation has become even more dark, with the ECG not yielding to calls for load sharing timetable. Speaking yesterday during the May Day celebration, Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Yaba, emphasized the urgency of resolving the power crisis. It is regrettable that the people of Ghana have to experience doom so again. After all what we went through in the past, please do something about doom so now. Now, responding to the demands of TUC, President Kufuado said the issues of maintenance and gas supply have been resolved. According to him, there's been some stability in electricity supply with no load shedding currently ongoing. For the period, the issues surrounding maintenance of transformers and gas supply have been successfully resolved, resolved, resulting in a sufficient improvement in power supply reliability. Indeed, over the past few days, we have witnessed stable electricity supply across the country with no low shedding reported anywhere yesterday. For the past seven years, we have worked tirelessly to keep the lights on, and I am confident that the unfortunate era of doom so will not return. So what is the situation regarding electricity supply? The Institute for Energy Security is challenging President Kufuado on this statement. They say the power situation has not been resolved, as suggested by the President. Listen to this Executive Director, Anam Wesi, the seventh. Yes, um, we know that the power supply has, uh, reliability has improved. However, we still have a deficit, a deficit of more than 200 megawatts to meet our peak demand. We did check um, from the ground and we found a disconnect between the present remarks and the reality on the ground. And it does appear that the present statement was made to just reassure the public and to address concerns raised by the leadership of labor union. But it does not accurately reflect the ongoing challenges in the power sector. Uh, it is possible that is possible to the extent that we've seen an improvement in generation and that the deficit that existed uh, some four months, three months, a uh, month ago has reduced and that we are able to produce beyond 3,500 megawatts. And we are still able to produce, uh, to export part of this power to our neighbors, roughly about 110 megawatts as compared to the 250 we we're doing before the problem started. We, uh, it is possible because uh, we have some fuel supply available now, but then we can't speak for government. How sustainable the supply will be is another thing to be discussed. The, the expectation is that um, gas flow and uh, liquid uh, fuel flow will be uh, improved, that um, all the plants available will also come on stream because we don't have any problem with uh, uh, install capacity here, all that we pray is that gas should flow, and also God must be great, uh, you know, gracious to us to uh, give us more of the rain to support the hydro that I mentioned, Bwikong and Akosombo, to produce more of that. If government is able, like I, I said earlier, to raise more revenue at the tail end of the value chain through the ECG and fairly distribute to all the utilities, their, their own contribution to power generation, then of course they can maintain their system and assets and produce more of that. So our main event this afternoon is the Apiate housing scheme that government is handing over to the community. Uh, two years on after that explosion that killed 17 people 
and displaced over 3,000 individuals. And we'll take you live to the place when the vice president arrives and the program is underway. But before we do that, the 2023 Joy News Impact Makers Award winner for the Bonner Region, Reverend Jefferson Wesi Agbotro, has applauded Joy News for his dedication and support to bringing positive change to the people in the region. Reverend Agbotro, the chief executive of Friends of Health Association, who plans to impact the lives of 5,000 people this year, says the mileage given by Joy News has brought enormous support out in New York to the benefit of the beneficiary. Precious Samuel has more. The first quarter cocktail meeting and fundraising of Friends of Health Association, FOHA, offered stakeholders, including volunteers, the chance to take stock and share ideas to improve the aim of saving lives and changing society. It was also to celebrate the chief executive of FOHA, Reverend Jefferson Kwesiak Botro, 2023 Joy News Impact Maker winner for his dedication and impactful drive in the Bono region. I believe that um, in the next 16 years, um, it will be a state banquet celebration, creating in for the impact not only in Ghana but across the world. Being on a national television and Joy News per se is not a cook up or a make up story. Uh, some 70 years to come, he will be gone, but his name will still be relevant. Reverend Jeff, this is a, a, a journey you have just started. The, the, the battle is going to be very tough. We will come on board to support you. Mr. Gautreau mentioned some areas for her is focusing on for 2024. In the next one year, we want to empower 5,000 people from the basic to the senior high and then at the university level in the area of teenage pregnancy advocacy, child marriage advocacy, skill development, and you are looking at uh, mentorship and career guidance for the youth because they are the future of the nation. So if we don't empower them, we cannot have a secure future. And then we are also looking at the medical outreaches that we are doing to screen more people on diabetes, hypertension, which is on the ascendancy, more people are dying of stroke, non-communicable disease. And to also raise fund and mobilize fund to support our community because all this hinges on financial support. He applauded Joy News for the continued support and mileage impacting the work of FOHA. The last one year has been very interesting, but after Joy News awarded me, there are more recognition, more acceptance, in fact, more open doors, in terms of people coming in to really support. The food project that we implemented was after the Joy News Impact Makers Award. And as I speak, there is an organization coming on board to support us to roll up a medical support project. And all this are because of the publicity Joy News has given to us, which is making people to see what we are doing. And thankfully, the project lead, we've been in touch with her, helping us a resource person that we couldn't have gotten access to. So Joy News Impact Makers Award, I've never seen other hours, they are all due to leave you to your faith, but they have been with us from day one up to now. Even inviting us to even come for the Impact Maker 2024 is remarkable. A new for her website, forhagana.com, was outdoored to help connect to the outside world and donors to aid for her to continue impacting society. Precious Summer for Joy News, Sunyai. Now, in a significant step towards the rejuvenation of coastal communities in Ghana, the West African Coastal Management Project, WACA, has launched its operations with a strong commitment to restoring social economic activities in the area. Led by project coordinator Nobo Waza and Ken Keenan, the initiative aimed to revitalize the coastal regions, starting with Keta and Anloga, through sustainable practices and eco-friendly tourism. The project, which has been generously so supported by the World Bank, kick off with a series of engagement with local stakeholders highlighting its core mission to uplift the communities and preserve the natural beauty of the coastal areas. There's more in this report. Sanitation situation in some parts of Aplau in the Ketu South municipality, especially some of the beaches and the beaches as well as the various lorry parks has been a major concern to stakeholders and residents a situation some described as very worrying the newly constructed facility is equipped with modern amenities aimed at providing convenience and hygiene to users 
with 20 toilets and accompany 20 bathing facilities that is expected to cater to the needs of both travelers and locals frequenting the border VIP station. And his address, the MCE 4 Ketu South, Maswa Lugudo, highlighted the, the collaborative efforts that led to the realization of the project and urged residents to take adequate care of the facility. He's been speaking for Joy News. You know, this is a flower border, a very big place. Uh, we can't wait till people start defecating all over. When you go to the beaches now, because there is no place of convenience. People are doing whatever they want to do at the beaches. Sometimes you go for jogging, uh, you come back with another kambu. So uh, I want to stop everybody from defecating at the beach. But if you don't make a provision, uh, I think uh, you, you will just waste your time. So from today, we are going to stop people from going to the beach side, strictly, very strictly, because there is a place now that you can go. As you can see, it's a very big project, uh, about 20 uh, seater uh, toilets and uh, 20 uh, places that you can bath. They have a place for uh, Muslims who are traveling. You can come wash your hands and, uh, and foot and pray that there's a place. And uh, the, our, uh, our mothers who travel from Kumasi, they want a place to, to, to bath. When you are tired from the car, they want a place to go and, uh, and urinate. Uh, well, there's provision for all those things. We're going to make sure we provide security because uh, as a music chairman, I've been having a lot of complaint that when the, uh, the, the passengers or the visitor comes like that, uh, some of the places when they go, uh, the bad boys that attack them and take their money from them. So strictly, uh, we are going to make sure this place is safe, that you can come and bath whatever you want to do to, to, to prepare yourself for your, 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 your journey again. The commissioning of the toilet facility comes at a crucial time when concerns over sanitation and hygiene have been heightened due to the ongoing public health challenges. Residents express their appreciation for the initiative, noting its significance in promoting public health and well-being. Some of them have been speaking with Joy News. That one in opinion is very nice. They help her. I uh, for all people to be thief boys to be plenty. If you do like this, it's very nice for traders and others. It's very good. So I can say this work of the multi major boys in this can be a boss on a fake yeah ten year day. This any man of course for one in a my idea monto yes and here bambo a police baby boa a contufono a boa omen de be a junk of physical and home take. Now they will open the toilet. But we don't know the price of the toilet. Maybe we are customer, they will, they will come up to I'm, I'm VIP, I'm a VIP station. I'm booking a bookman for a year. Now we know say they will open the toilet. How much they pay for bath and toilet? So after now we know, maybe if it's 10, 3, 5, 3, 20, 3, we know. If my customer come, they will open toilet for a year. Bathroom here for a year. That is 20, 3 or 30, 3. Topi Vegesu of Aplau who represented the paramount chief of Aplau, Togbiga Ajanugaga Amenya Fiti, has this to say in a verb. I'm a common Ghana to Kwakata, Baudon Kunyaji, Bida, Yamayola, Alamayola Station of Fia, Okoji Jogan, let's gaze over to the Fiata. Idia Gaba Assembly, Ajaba, the Ochi Boy, I call the Shina. Station tour, go to Gazelle and I go up with Gazama Lulu. You are now, you are now, we are. You are Baba Jit Tepella, Afia, go to Tepea Legi. The Poya Alulu Bantua, a Taba Plawango, you call a plow traditional councillor member. The council cut up with them. Bum, Bagbo, you know the Gavaga, we are told number MC Bukwaji, a lava, a mayo, a plow torture, a plow vie, a do she to keep a plow to any other bell, I don't call a plow to qua. Mamma Godo Machimo, a Babajan Labour Dawn or Katama, a Labour Dawn or Flau Dukwanja. With the commissioning of the ultra modern toilet facility, Aplau takes a significant stride towards addressing sanitation challenges and promoting public health within the Ketu South municipality. Ivy Satoji, 
Do more stories before we take you to your priority because in a pungent testament to resilience, two survivors of child trafficking have defied the odds, braving the storm of their past to pursue higher education. Against the backdrop of adversity, these individuals have emerged as beacons of hope, their journey marked by courage and determination. At the forefront of this narrative stands the village of life, a beacon of hope for survivors of trafficking. There's more in this report. This narrative stands the village of life in Ketakrachi in the Ruti region, which is a beacon of hope for survivors of trafficking. The director of Village of Life, George Achibra, reflecting on their arduous journey, he emphasized the transformative power of education in breaking the chains of exploitation. So we start to do some sensitization and educate them. Thank God, the government of Ghana has not slept on these issues. Laws have been enacted, apart from the Children's Act, apart from even the treaty that we signed with the United Nations con concerning the, the C CRC, as the Convention of the Rights of the Child, boxing all these kind of uh, uh, particulars, then we need that we have good material that we can talk. So I think that is the first thing I think the government of Ghana, and looking at our constitution, it also forms of our even misuse and my handling of children. So it has even softened us and given us the real uh, powers for us to speak to fishermen and perpetrators who are really uh, my handling our children. And so that is how Pakodeb started. And uh, there was no way that we can use that. We say partners in community development program. So quickly, Pakodep came to be. And as, as a sole founder and a, a leading, I need people who can reason with me and who can join me to fight this madness against children. So this is a briefly about how it came to be. And as a young teacher in the classroom, I still double up my time. Any other extra time, I visit the islands to speak to people, to change the mindset so that we can own this, our children. We may be living not quite soon, but we need people who will replace us. The various profession that we have, call it anything, the journalist, the lawyer, the teacher, the president, what have you? We need to get people who will replace us for tomorrow so that our Ghana will not even completely equal to the U.S., or any of the Western world, but it's not getting closer for a beautiful country like this. The stories shared by these survivors, now full-grown men, offer a glimpse into the harrowing realities they endured and the triumphs they have achieved, despite facing unimaginable hardships in their formative years, they refuse to be defined by their past instead choosing to chart a new course toward academic excellence and personal growth. How old were you when you were brought here? And what were you doing? Where were you rescued from? Okay, at first I was with my mother at Adam. So that was the story they told me because I was too young. They said I was with my mother at Adam. So she was six. So one of my aunties took me to Karachi, that is just a little side. So according to her, that she asked me as I want to go to school. So she said then, as she follow her, I will come and school here. So we were there, first year, second year, I was not going to school. I was rather going to the lake. So by God willing, Mr. Chibra, the uh, director, he came and saw me on the lake. I was working for the man. He, he took me to the home here. Actually, I cannot see, um, the actual year I cannot see, but four or five years, I guess, four or mm -hmm. five years. 
So I came to the shelter here with the ticket of me feeding everything school. And so I entered the first class, the next day. I entered a class here. I got to DHS I wrote my BC in my past and they continue to take care of me. They send me to the SHS. That is as for four senior high school. So we just completed last year. You have beautiful results. Um, when I was a kid, I was with my parents and my uncle came for me to come and stay with him um, in one of the islands around Kitekachi. So I was with him, helping him to do his fishing job, and you know, it wasn't. This is a pause here on Joy News. Now, uh, the story we are keeping an eye on is the government decision to hand over some 120 uh, houses to the Apiati community following the explosion two years ago. The vice president has just arrived. I can now take you live to Apiati now. With live feature from Persons GTV. Of the Vice President of the Republic, His Excellency Elaji Dr. Marion de Bermia, the MPP presidential candidate for 2024 presidential elections. Over the past eight years, he has been the Vice President of the Republic with distinction. And we are observing the gallant entry of the Vice President, His Excellency Al Haji Dr. Mohamed Bermia. This is Joy News. This is a pause. This is Joy News. And of course, we are bringing you live coverage of the handing over of new houses for the Apiati community. This community was virtually raised down by an explosion uh, two years ago. Uh, government decided to rebuild the facility, and now the handing over ceremony is ongoing.
kwamba unyamina kwamba yetawasi haleluya yetawasi unyamia kwamba yewa yesu yeyiwa ya unyamia kwamba ya kamfu unyamia kwamba unyamia kwamba Yeda wasi Ewabe yeda wasi Efi tete nchebe uyu nyami Ene nsu wachile se uyu nyami Brichi yebo ya inanu diye temu Nansu unyansani unimu diye buntuka eni pabi kuma Maobu wabu ajuri ini mdiyano Sika eni jote Ama ene yehuni ya yehuni ya Ewabe yeda wasi Yeda wasi menipa wadu wa mtu kwa ifri ya chiri chiri Eni menchani ya baye ya kamfu nyansa ni unimdiye ebo mpaye se radidi yankai na yuye jubedia ya ya di asede ni kabiyama Jesus Christ day munte Amen Shariya resume asis thank you so much yes yes we thank you so much for being here to grace this occasion and I know you have a very limited time here today we don't see the village of Apiati we don't see the township of Apiati. What we see today is the city of Apiati. A round of applause for the city of Apiati. Now help me welcome the Western Regional Minister Honorable Kwabna Ocho Dako for the opening remarks. Good. Okay. Good evening. What? Good evening. Okay. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana and the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, Nana. Tetete Ikwama Sechim, Chiefs, Elders of Apiete, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, all other ministers here present, Board Chair, Minerals Commission, and Parliamentary Candidate for Prisia Univalley Constituency. Honorable Barbara Otin JC, sponsors, partners, heads of departments, the clergy, the good people of Apiete. I'm very happy to be here this afternoon. I am also very happy that we've come to the end of a long journey from 2022. Today is both a solemn occasion and also a joyous occasion. Solemn because we have lost life here. We are celebrating because at the end of the day, our wishes have been met. I still remember that fateful day when the NADMO coordinator for the district called me and crying that over 130 people have died and he was crying I still remember the call I got from the DMC Honorable Dasmani and I still remember the work that was being done by Barbara to settle our people but the most unforgettable thing was when the vice president under the leadership of Nanado Danko Akufuado arrived here at Apiete. He didn't come alone. He came with the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. Today, the Western region is grateful to His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado, President of Ghana, for giving the orders to get Apiate rebuilt. Today, as we are here, 
we can all see the good work that has been done by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, led by Honorable Abu Jinapo and Committee Chairman Honorable Benito Owusubio, MP. So today, it is my single honor to welcome all of you to this commissioning of these beautiful houses that has been built with Ghanaian technology, that has been built with the hands of the people of Apiete, that has been built with our agencies all throughout this country. It is therefore my single honor to welcome all of you once again back here to Apiete to celebrate the success of a government that is determined to solve the problem of its people. This is the first of its kind anywhere that has happened in Ghana. And I know that our government believes in its people, believes that everything is possible, and we are here. And I believe that we have seen the possibility of a determined nation. Thank you very much for coming, and I know God will take us through this program very successfully. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for the Western Regional Minister. Honorable Kabna Ochre Dako Mensa, we thank you so much. It's true adversity that we count our blessings. What I'm seeing right now, there are no rains, they are showers of blessings. So now, these are showers of blessings, and this is an indication that indeed we have the approval of Allah. We have the approval of our Lord Jesus Christ for these events. We now move on. I'd uh, like to invite Nana, the Divisional Chief of BIPO, Nana Atakojo Brembi II. He's the Divisional Chief of BIPO to give us a welcome address also here to Apiati. Nana, where are you? I need you more. I need to catch up with you. I'm about to change era. Now we need a drink more. Kakra era. I need a cost of era. I need a fee. I need a bed. Some need more a bed. I need a extra set. I'm part a bed. I want you more. Now it's you. But for mine, I pay to my more. I am say, I have 20th January. 2022 and film ma ma nana Sudan is to be called President Dr. Mahmoud Barumia, <laughs> Western Regional Minister to Sudan will be a commando. Yamame Barbara Otin Jesse, Chairperson, and also Sudan will be a commando. A fee, a PRTA. Committee Chairman, Honorable Benito Bio, as a so a commando. Yabai Yabada YMC, Aya Dr. Isaac Dasimani, and also the Nasu. As a day being so comma, Aya FGR, Committee Affairs Manager, Yadanasu Bebri, FSO. Bogoso Police Commander and also Yadanas. Iso Koma Onoma Yabaya Babrayan Aya Anabo as a Yen and also Batra Electra Area and also Yadanas. The American said, Appear to four here and also. Yadanas. The American said, appear to for Ghana, Mayna, 
Satu irancem ya etu ya ma ya nshano so ne bia antu ye biem emra eja no eda no ewa kai no no na obi anim de na so onum na etwe be na omkwa se omko video no ade ana blaste ya no dodo ana ebi no so e pre praya sabre eguso eje ayarutu ye enzo ya de nyamya se Anabol Benito Bio, Nada Roma, Udia Nimo Idia, and you say Ubia, Nahobetono, but Unquem, a fee at the Sredia, Medestre, Anabol Benito, and a vice chairman, and Maya Juma Bibri, Nanso, a Piatino, first face, and a YB, yes, some say Akachiano, and also Mamma Dia say. Move ye a mayen na asum yaba. We ran a sa Jiawa Safi and say, O my hini and um a yeah of katechie in tifu asare or tosunum weda munyana de kwa we ya that as the dabe ma munyana ya the masubri. Nana yadas edasi yedim sampa manyaso. And now my Akosu Ewaha. Now you have to answer Edia Fre, the project architect, for a technical review of this magnificent edifice. And there, Ihu Ewaha. Let's invite Mr. Charles Blackson Hermans to give us a technical review of the project here. His Excellency. The Western Regional Minister, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Ministers of State, Chairman and Members of the APRC Reconstruction Implementation Committee, Chairperson and Members of the APRC Support Fund, Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives, Nananum Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. The APRC Redevelopment Implementation Committee was inaugurated on 3rd February 2022 by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, and comprised of members of professional institutions in the relevant fields and from the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. May I please crave your kind indulgence to mention the names and those selfless, hardworking persons on the committee who have brought the project this far. And I mention Honorable Benito Wutsubio, Mr. Sylvester Ajonu of the Ministry of um, Works and Housing and, the, and Director of Rural Housing, Mr. Kojo Yabwa of LUSPA, Mr. Mohamed Damba of LUSPA, Mr. Charles Jobaniku, Ghana Institute of Architects, Mr. Charles Blankson Himans, Ghana Institute of Architects, Mr. Robert Jemfi, Resettlement Specialist of the Chamber of Mines. Nana Nyuama Che Bafo, Ghana Institution of Surveyors. Nana Ata Kojo Bremibi, Divisional Chief of BIPO. Later on, co opted members were Honorable Kwabna Ochri Daku Mensa, Western Regional Minister. Honorable Isaac Dasmani, MCE, Pristi, Pristia Huni Valley. Dr. Walenea Sebi, Director Water Resources. Mr. Samuel Akwako, GHA, Yaosafo, ECG, Mr. Obing Poku, Ministry of Sanitation, and Mr. Frank Ose, etc. Thank you very much, committee members. I would definitely like to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for your work. Very quickly, I'll run through what actually happened. Between February 22 and July 2022, we had committee meetings, we organized an open ideas competition published in the daily graphic. Um, and then also the temporary works were done at the Dumasi resettlement site after rainfall destroyed the relief camp. August 2022, we went for PPA approval. 5th September 2022, the contract commenced for 124 houses. Uh, December 2023 was the original completion date and we are commissioning the project today, May 2023, giving a contract duration of 18 months. Our scope of works as a committee was to oversee the planning, design and reconstruction of the Apiatsi Township. 
into a modern, green, and eco-sustainable community. The master plan designed by LUSPA was to accommodate about 870 people on an area of about 205 acres. To a large extent, the plan maintains the pre-disaster cultural settings and lifestyles of the people by providing varying land sizes, access roads and networks, as well as communal land uses that keep the community closely knit. The planning was for 185 square meters, 279, 372, and 585 square meters. The scheme was developed along the lines of an eco-community, green community development, with emphasis on building design, energy efficiency, water conservation, sustainable site development. The houses were designed to reflect the social economic and cultural needs. Adequate cross ventilation by the use of large open windows and adjustable louver blades were provided. Other design considerations included wide overhangs, courtyard spaces, harvesting of rainwater, the use of compressed earth bricks fitted in with the use of building materials that was available locally. Whilst we would have liked to have covered as much of the green technology requirements as possible, we did have a few challenges and provided as much as we could. Aside of the housing units, other social amenities included school, markets, green belt and memorial park, which will be commissioned today, play areas, infrastructure included roads, electricity, water, and street lights. The project consists of one to seven bedroom house types, and the details which, because of the rain, I cannot read are in the brochure that have been um, provided. So that will give you the total number, but suffice to say 124 houses have been built. At this uh, on occasion, I'd like to also thank the contractors, and for the sake of what we have to do, I'll mention them quickly. Lot 1 was done by Builders.com, Lot 2 by Finest Elevation, Lot 3 by Megatech Plus Engineering, Lot 4 by Max Sams, Lot 5 by Macastro, and Lot 6 by Savannah Grand. Phase two is made up of houses, and this covers phase one. Phase two is made up of houses that were um, damaged during the, um, the explosion, and therefore works have commenced on the phase two. Phase three is made up of additional houses that were destroyed or demolished during the construction works, and this will be commissioned by His Excellency the Vice President this afternoon. In summary, we would like to express our gratitude to the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Samuel A. Jinapo, for inviting us to sit on the committee to provide our professional support in this disaster remediation. We trust that we have assisted in reconstructing the Apiasi Township and hope that this serves as a foundation to enable the good people of Apiasi to rebuild their lives. Thank you very much. And I salute the good people of Apiasi. Thank you. Ensemble, ensemble, ensemble. Apiasi for more, Happy Ati for Mohana Mentu Wako. Happy Ati for Moha. Now, Vice President Sabinkacha will say, Eja, Anna Adi Ambaha, and then Su, Anna Asia and Quine. No, no, the Anioka and they say, In Sumo, Ojamo, on him one Eti ensoya etoi emuna bamukra sansa oha to serve the people of Apiate to serve the people of Ghana. One first about the vice president and the APP presidential candidates. For brevity. And uh, for the sake of time, I would like to invite one of the most adorable ministers we have. He's very smart, energetic, efficient, and of course, generous. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, shall we welcome the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, the MP for Damango, Honorable Samuel Abu Jinapo.
Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Western Region, Honorable Ministers, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Deputy Minister for Education, Chairman and members of the APAT Reconstruction Implementation Committee, Person and members of the APAT Support Fund, Chairperson of the Minerals Commission, Tant Municipal and District Chief Executive, Clergyman Nananum, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, is grateful to the Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Dubaum, for his dedication and continual support to the Ministry and for accepting to perform this consequential of commissioning this modern and green reconstructed APAT community. Indeed, since the unfortunate incident of 20th January 2022, the Vice President has been very instrumental in bringing relief to the people of APAT, including leading a government delegation to this community immediate aftermath of the incident and making a personal donation towards the initial relief efforts. Therefore, appropriate and heartwarming to have the Vice President, who has been with the people of Africa from the very beginning, commission this edifice to restore hope to the victims of the incident. Outset, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources wish to reiterate our condolences to the victims. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, We can continue. Eh? We can continue. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this president called for at least three immediate actions. The first was the provision of emergency. That is why the vice president led a delegation to commensurate with the victims of the incident. It's not donation towards bringing relief to the people of APAT in those devastating times. On the instruction of the President, the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMU, mobilized to this town to provide the emergency relief. With the support of the Catholic Church, victims who were rendered homeless were housed Close Parish Hall at Bogoso. Subsequently, in partnership with FGR, temporary accommodation in the form of tents were erected at the community for displaced families. FGR again gave us four buildings at Dumase, which the appeared to support fund, later roofed and refurbished to house the affected as the rains began to fall. Through these efforts, we have been able to provide decent temporary accommodation for all victims of the incident up to date.
lives, injuring many and leaving the entire community homeless. It led to a huge explosion which claimed 13 lives in southern Ghana. Dozens of homes were destroyed in this village near the town of Bogoso. <laughs> When the explosion occurred uh, in Pristia Huni Valley, so initially I didn't know where to send them to. So uh, I quickly made an arrangement with the bishop, Catholic bishop at uh, Bogoso. They have a big hall and then he accepted to accommodate all of them. Here we are talking about 1,050 people. Some men from the assembly came. They told the father, we have no other place by your place because you have a very vast uh, parish hall that can contain about 200 to 250 people at a time. And quickly, what Christ tells us in Matthew chapter 25 comes to mind. The corporal works of mercy. You provide shelter for the homeless. You provide clothes for the naked, food for the hungry, and you visit the sick, the, 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 the imprisoned. So we came in, those that I had around, we came in, and then quickly we started putting the place in order. Responding swiftly to the crisis, His Excellency Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Bahoumia, on behalf of President Kufuado, led a high-level government delegation to Apiazi. For the houses that have been destroyed, we are already beginning to think about how two, to one, two. Uh, rehabilitate and rebuild for the community two, two. here. So I want to assure Nananum. Two years of relentless construction, determination, and unity have transformed the Piazzi. You know, our leaders are elected to solve problems. So they are here to solve our problems. And I would like to invite once again the Honorable Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Samuel Abu Jidapo. So, Your Excellency, we thank you very much for all your support and thank you very much for all you've done for the people of Apieti. I want to use this occasion to single out the former Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, former Member of Parliament for Pristia Huni Valley, Chairperson of the Minerals Commission, and parliamentary candidate of the new patriotic party for the Pristia Huni Valley constituency. The Honorable 
lawyer, Mrs. Barbara Oting Jesse. For her extraordinary leadership and support, she has been on us morning, afternoon, evening, midnight to ensure that we rebuild this Apiety community. And I think a lot of the credit goes to Honorable Barbara Otin Jesse. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, in conclusion, if anybody thought, if anybody thought that governments do not keep their promises, the vice president made a promise to the people of Apiety, and this is a promise made, a promise kept. And if anybody thought that governments cannot deliver, President Akufuado and Vice President Mohamedou Baumia's government has demonstrated that there is a government here in Ghana which is delivering, which will deliver, and which will forever deliver for the people of Ghana, the people of Pristia Huni Valley, and the people of Apiati. And so, and so, Nana, Nana Nom, ladies and gentlemen, join me to invite and welcome the man with bold solutions for the future. The man who believes that it is possible to build Apiati back. The man who believes that it is possible to bring comfort to the people of Apiety. The man who believes that it is possible to turn things around. And the man who believes that it is possible to break the aid and transform our country into a country of prosperity, of progress. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the republic, His Excellency the Vice President, Dr. Mahamadou. Bawumia! Thank you. Thank you very much. Our eminent clergy the Western Regional Minister, Kobe Ochridaku, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources and MP, Kodamango, Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, our Minister for Information, Fatima Abubakar, the Minister designated for Gender, Dakwa Newman, the Deputy Minister for Education, Reverend Tim Foggio, an MP for Asin South, the Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, an MP for Takwa Nsuayim, Honorable Miracle Duca, Chairman and members of the APHC Reconstruction committee nana atakoju brembi the second divisional chief of the fiasi traditional area barbara otengesi chairperson of the minerals commission former member of parliament and the parliamentary candidate for christia huni valley constituency the incoming MMDC's directors and staff of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Sarakin Zongo, Sarake, then the Imams. Distinguished members from the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On Thursday, 20th January, 2022, a very tragic incident occurred in this community at this same place where we are gathered today a sudden explosion shook our foundations
left the PRC community and indeed the entire country in deep sorrow and distress. The following day, on behalf of the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado, I led a delegation which included ministers, heads of security agencies, and National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and other officials of the presidency to commiserate with the victims of the incident. I saw at first hand the devastation that the incident has caused to this once vibrant community with some of our people unfortunately losing their lives and others suffering various degrees of injuries as well as the near total collapse of the entire APRC community. Yesterday a candlelight vigil was held here to commemorate the souls that were lost on that fateful day. Their absence leaves an ache, a void that cannot be full, cannot fully heal, heal. But in this gathering, we find solace, a shared space where our grief is not a burden in solace, but a testament to the death of our bonds. May their souls continue to abide in the bosom of the Almighty till we meet again on the day of the resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, today we gather at this same venue, not just to commemorate the tragic event, but also to celebrate resilience, compassion, and the indomitable spirit of the people of Abiyatse. While mourning those who lost their lives through this tragic incident, we stand in solidarity with the survivors who bear both physical and emotional wounds and recognize the heroic efforts of our emergency responders, exemplified in the selflessness that defines our nation. But adversity has a way of revealing our strength, the strength to rise, rebuild, and reimagine. From this tragedy, emerge resilience, the resilience to rebuild the community, the resilience to bring hope to the suffering, and unwavering commitment to lift the downtrodden. As if God has given us a message today, we had fire that destroyed this community in many ways. And today, as we are, here to commission and inaugurate these housing units, this rebuilt community. God is sending down water to, to basically tell us it is okay. As we can all attest, government through the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources acted swiftly following the incident. And in collaboration with other ministries, departments, and agencies, relief was brought to the victims of the incident through the provision of relief items, the diversion of the road that was blown away, and its eventual fixing, and the provision of temporary accommodation for all those displaced. But were we going to end up there? Not at all. Government took it upon itself to see to the reconstruction of the community to provide a permanent place of abode for the residents of this community and to restore them to dignity, to the dignity they deserve. So when I came here, after immediately after the incident, the president asked me to let the community know that this community will be rebuilt, the houses will be rebuilt. And therefore, I made that promise on behalf of His Excellency that government will rebuild. 
And as we can all see, we, the president, has delivered on this commitment. Today, we stand on the precipice of a new dawn, the rebirth of Apiasi, with the completion of 124 housing units, together with other social amenities to replace what was damaged by the explosion. We found strength in the face of the devastation, hope amidst despair, and unity of purpose despite the disintegration. We are grateful to all who offered support in our time of need, whether through words of comfort, a listening ear, or of a need or a temporary place of abode. We are grateful to the various committees, the APRC Support Fund, the APRC Implementation Committee, the experts, and the consultants. I'm happy that we have done it together. We owe it to the victims of the incident, their families, and our entire nation to prevent such tragedies in the future. Nananum, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I cannot end my speech without paying a glowing tribute to His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, whose commitment and tenacity has led to the construction of this new community. As we heard from the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, President Akufuado was the first person to donate to the APRC Support Fund, a sign of his compassion and dedication towards the rebuilding of this community. In addition to this donation, President Akufuado directed that, the, that $5 million out of the $6 million administrative fine imposed on the company at the center of the explosion be paid to the APRC Support Fund to support victims of the incident and the rebuilding of this community. Such a selfless and compassionate gesture. To the indefatigable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Samuel Abujinapo, who has led this project from the beginning to date, I say thank you for your exemplary leadership and dedication. Your commitment, Minister, and relentless zeal in seeing to the completion of this project has been unwavering. This is why I refer to him as the bulldozer minister. He just clears problems away. He gets things done. I am aware of the several visits, minister, that you made to this community to assess progress of work and to ensure that the contractors execute the project on schedule. The people of APRC are grateful for your services. I count on your dedication to see to the completion of phase three of this project. I will also be remiss if I did not single out for special mention Honorable Barbara Utain Jesse. The chair, the chairperson of the Minerals Commission, former member of parliament for Pristia Himi Valley, and a parliamentary candidate, Isha Allah, the incoming MP for Pristia Himi Valley, Isha Allah. She has been very dogged in her desire to see this project completed. She's always, always pushing and pushing. And I know that she has the people of Apiasi in at heart and the people of Pristia Honey Valley constituency at heart. Barbara, thank you so much for all that you have done. Well done, well done. 
Mwananum Muamuba Babwa Otingesi Former MP Obo Modenta Wa Ejima Yebitini Ye Wahano Mumbo Mumbo Nabaso Mimi Bonabaso Mosu Mumbo Nabaso Obo Modin President Nana Kufuado Oshe Mubo Se Asama Isi Yeno Obe Si a dying for four ama munina. O kaya no so we di so a nen yamia dum ye hundred and twenty-four housing units. Nana kufuado o ye o see idea o ye a yesa or ye dana se nyame shirani nyina munina bako 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 salamu alaikum. Natural resources. I like to recognize the presence of Engineer Governor Ajay Ajapon here with us. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, again, I like to recognize the presence of the Director General of NABMO, Honorable Eric Nana Ajiman Pempe. Thank you so much. And then again, I acknowledge the presence of Honorable Maxwell Kofi Juba. Also here with us. Hey, do you? Oh, you know that. Okay. And of course, indeed, very affable, down to earth, beautiful, honorable Catherine Afeku. Also here with us. Thank you so much. We're not shy. The vice president will be there to serve you. Is it possible? We're not shy. The Vice President will be there to serve you. Is it possible? Is it possible? Let's invite Honorable Benito Usubiu. His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Honorable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Honorable Western Regional Minister, Honorable Ministers and Deputy Ministers of State Presence, Nananum, all protocols observed. On behalf of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, led by Honorable Samuel A. Jinapa, the Minister and MP for Damango, and on behalf of the PAT Reconstruction and Implementation Committee, I wish to express my profound gratitude to His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuadu. President of the Republic for his vision to rebuild and bring life back to APAT and for being the first to contribute to the support fund. This single handed action led corporate Ghana and other well meaning Ghanaians to go all out to donate to achieve this vision of rebuilding. Ladies and gentlemen, our appreciation again goes to His Excellency, the Vice President. Permit me to extend our appreciation to the hard-working members of the PAT Reconstruction Implementation Team who worked with a range of stakeholders to rebuild a PAT after the disaster of 20th January 2022. Your Excellency, truly, it has been a very challenging work, but I am, however, very happy to report that all relevant stakeholders and partners have so far rallied together to deliver for our PAT. Today is a culmination of all the tireless efforts put in by all of us over the last two years to bring our PAT to back. Your Excellency, I would like to particularly salute the chiefs and people of our PAT for the cooperation we have enjoyed from them 
in Iraq. They have demonstrated immense relevance and resourcefulness in the face of unimaginable calamity. It has been an honor working with them to rebuild the community. I am confident that they will continue to work it with us to continue or complete the tasks assigned us. To conclude, I would like to assure you, Your Excellency, and the Honorable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, that we will continue to work diligently to successfully complete this important work. We know we can also count on your advice and support as always. Thank you and God bless us all. But we shouldn't forget the hardworking MCE of Christia Huni Valley, the Honorable Dasmani for his immense contribution and likewise the Honorable Barbara Otinjasi. She is here to do a donation to the good people of Apiati. Apiati for more one, more one, ah, wasaima, I say, what the normal be abroad to be done on Akasa. You will make that say, Honorable, His Excellency, the Vice President, the Honorable Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. Um, ministers and deputy ministers here present, um, all the dignitaries on the on the days, Nanalum, um, Prisia Hunivali Ma, Apiete Mai, Enedia, Enije Asheyina Yakume Mumma, Dalo Na Yesua, Dalo Na Yesua, Enedia Yesu, Yada. His Excellency Ekufuadu Asse, and His Excellency the Vice President Asse, our dear Yama Yen, na asamtu yen na yeni ni ayeshe enso ene yeni na yeni aji yeni eni daso na minimse mo ene monsanka mudi eno face three na yeba be eno monso monsa beka mudi e inti ema mo mpa ba. Na mungu ni sani ya 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 mauni ya endeno Ochina wonsa wonsa ebeka wodie Ite ya nda sisu nkupa na me As former member of parliament for Prisia Huni Valley And as the chairperson of the Minerals Commission If we say atoy wonche ma esi ya nsono Na ewa ye ya suwe ye E ye lands and natural resources Inti se ne government ne tu anamompa we ya E ye ahuhuwa huwa edima ye nso Inti midi ya me se ne mijina ha Ye ina ye ba ye da yufu fromu Midi ya chedi ya kakra Midi ya miyo ba o Inti me ba ye Midi ya miyo ba o Inti me ba ye Midi ya du ya ne kakra na midi ya bromu E ye mo e ni ya mwa Eni enchen sinye ya ye niye mwe du ya ni Me si e ne ya mo komu fi ya yufu froyi E ne ya mo komu fi ya yufu froyi Mini ya no mba mo api ya tini na Midi enchen sinye ne bo mo atina se Se mo kofi ya Mo konu ya du ya ne ya wo enchen sinye no E ye enshira e ma mo eni mo konu eni mo ma E fi ya ne e kopi mi de ni na mo bet na api ya tini ma ya mo Dying for Froya, a buying ADAC, Eddie Amamo, Yamisha, one bag for each household, one gallon of oil for each household. We'd like to invite the chief Imam of Bogoso to give us a closing prayer. Sheikh Farouk. Put your hands together for Sheikh Farouk to give us the grace and prayer. He's the chief imam for Bogoso. Followed by the national anthem. And His Excellency Vice President of the Republic will go and commission, officially commission, the reconstructed Apiati Township. And I call it the city of Apiati. Okay.
صلوا على نبي الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الاخره حسنا وقنا دار النار برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين صل فاتت الكتاب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين We now rise for the national anthem respectfully. of Ghana, on behalf of His Excellency the Vice President of the Republic, on behalf of the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, the Western Regional Minister, the <laughs> Minister of Information, Fatima Abubakar, on behalf of everyone here, I would like to say a big thank you for joining us for the commissioning of the reconstructed Apiati Township. May the Lord be with you. God bless our homeland Ghana. Personal integrity, accountability, and selfless leadership. If you are looking for the man who has the vision and commitment to prepare Ghana for the fourth industrial revolution, then it is Dr. Baumia.